Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Slauson, one of the Algebra 2 teachers, and I am your teacher for today. And we are going to be quickly jumping back to page 51 in our spirals. So why don't you go ahead and get to page 51, and then you will also need your graphing calculator. So if you can get that out, that would be great. Uh, pause the video till you have those things, and then when you're ready, go ahead and put play. All right, on page 51, I just want to review with you synthetic division because we will need synthetic division in order to get through our section 4.3. So a reminder of synthetic division as well as long division, you just want to make sure that you have what I call the countdown, that in your dividend, that's what we're trying to divide, and your divisor, you need to have what I call the countdown again. And that means if you start with an exponent of three, you need a countdown to zero. So exponent of three, exponent of two, an invisible exponent of one to no exponent, zero. So three, two, one, zero. Since we are doing synthetic division, what we're going to divide by, the divisor, you don't have to check because there's going to be, this will always be set. But if you do want to check, there's an invisible one. So a countdown of one to no exponent at all. Once you check your countdown, uh, you make what I call the upside down division box, but a little bigger. And we're going to take all the coefficients, all of these numbers, including in constant, and we're going to put them in here. So, And then I'm going to take my divisor, and I'm going to take the opposite of what I see here. So where I see a negative 1 or minus 1, I'll be putting a positive 1. Uh, some teachers ask you, you know, what number is going to go here, and it's just what would make this, we're going to call it a factor right now, or what would make these parentheses equal zero, and so you could take a moment, do that, and if you just add one, then that's the number you have to put over here. So synthetic division starts by bringing this first number down, and then just multiplying and adding. So one times two is two, add these up, I get negative 1, and now negative 1 is my multiplying, so negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, add these up, and now I multiply with 3, 3 times 1 is 3, add these up, and I get 2. The way our answer is going to work is the very end number is a remainder. Since we do have a remainder, we do not have factors. So when you divide something, remember, if you get 0 at the end, you've actually had you found some factors. If you do get a remainder, then you don't have factors. So this is the remainder. This gets to be the constant. This gets to x, x squared. And you would just keep adding x cubed, x to the fourth if you had some more numbers going to the left. So this part is your quotient, and this is your remainder. And the way we're writing our answer is the quotient plus, in a fraction, our remainder over what we divided by. And that is how synthetic division works. And again, was x minus 1 a factor? It was not. All right, flipping the page to page 52. Uh, we're going to do this bottom left one. And first, I'm going to check to see that I have my full countdown. So 3, 2, 1, 0. And then since it's synthetic division, this should be good, but this is an invisible one, so count on of one to zero. So just a reminder, I'm trying to see, is x minus two a factor of this? If I do not get a remainder, or if I get zero at the end saying the same thing, then yes, it's a factor. So putting my numbers in, two, negative three, I'm gonna put a one and a negative six, and then I just look at what's this number and I take the opposite of it, so I'll put a positive two there. So start by bringing the 2 down and multiply. Then you add, and then you multiply again, and then you add, and you multiply again, and then we get 0 at the end. So this is our remainder. That means x minus 2 is a factor. Factors always come in pairs. So for instance, just a reminder, if I said, what are factors of 24, 1 and 24, that's a pair. 2 and 12, that's a pair. 3 and 8, that's a pair. So what I want to know, if x minus 2 is one factor, what's its pair? What's its partner? So remainder, constant, x, x squared. This is the partner. So 
write in our answer, this is the answer to our division question. Is it a factor? Yes, this and what we divided by are considered factors. And if we took the time to multiply these, in my class we call them the neighbors meeting the neighbors, we would get back to what we started with, what we were trying to divide. Just like if I took any of these factors and multiplied them, I'd get back to what I started with. So that's your quick reminder of synthetic division. And now we're going to move into chapter four, section 4.3. Yeah. All right, so I am on page 76 now in your spiral. We are going to be doing section 4.3, the rational root theorem, and this is where you're going to need your calculator. So if you don't have your calculator, you need to get that out right now. All right, to get your calculator ready, go ahead and turn it on. And what I need for you to do is hit second window. We're going to go to our table setup. So again, that was second window. Just a reminder, you can always rewind something if I went too fast or you missed directions. And I don't really care about these numbers here. What I want you to do is arrow down to the row of independent and scroll over to ask. So that's flashing and hit enter. So now that ask is highlighted instead of the auto. And that's the only change we're going to do here. All right, I'm going to set my calculator aside and we're going to get into the rational root theorem. So when we first started with quadratics and we would try to make an x to factor there were times that you couldn't factor so if i were trying to find factors of 21 that make 5 i would not be able to find something like that and in my class we would have said nf for not factorable and then when it wasn't factorable then we would move into the quadratic formula that was our backup method so just a reminder of the quadratic formula but this only works with quadratics, so when our line leader, our leading term, is x squared. Since in this chapter we're working with problems that are much higher exponents, we can't use the quadratic formula. So we need another backup method, and that is known as the rational root theorem. So if you want to abbreviate that, we can call it RRT. So the first thing we're going to do, because this can take a little more work than we want, is we're just going to see if the polynomial is factorable or not. So what I'm going to do is just jump down to this example. I had done some writing already, so I had to uh, erase it. And since there are four terms, I will be grouping. But just a reminder, the very first step of all factoring is GCF. And I don't notice the greatest common factor. So from there, what I'm going to do is group these in parentheses. And this is where you can actually just pause and watch. You don't need to write anything down here. And I group the first two in parentheses. And I make sure that minus makes it look like a negative 5. So I put that subtraction sign with the 5x. And then I look here. Well, can I factor what's my GCF here? And I take out an x squared, and then I'm left with x minus 2. And then this is what I call the twinsies parentheses. When I go to GCF, the second parentheses, the parentheses have to match. Those are the twins. And when I look, what could I factor out of this? What could be a GCF to make this? There's no GCF that I can take out of these two terms to make x minus 2. So this is not factorable. So I don't need that right now. I need all the space I can, so I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to use um, something called the rational root theorem. And the way it works, I've changed the letters here, but what you're going to do is you're going to take the factors of the constant at the end. So C stands for constant. And you're also going to find the factors of the leading coefficient. So just a reminder of what this means. And the leading coefficient, if it's in standard form, it's just the number at the very front. And if you don't see a number, there's an invisible one. So here's my constant. I'm going to take 6, and I'm going to write all the factors for 6. And then my invisible 1, that's my leading coefficient. I'm going to find all the factors of 1, and I'm going to make a list. So the factors of 6. I like to put them in numerical order. Uh, one thing you're going to have to think about that factors of 6, for instance, can be 2 and 3 because 2 times 3 is 6, but also negative 2 and negative 3 could make a positive 6. So rather than write 1, 2, 3, 6, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6, I like to put a plus minus in the front, wrap it in parentheses. So my list of factors for 6 are 
the 1, 2, 3, 6, but also negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6. So it looks like I have four numbers, but there's actually 10 factors there. And I'll do the same for the factors of 1. The only factors of 1 are 1 and 1. I'm not going to write it twice. But where 1 times 1 can make 1, so can a negative 1 and negative 1. So there's also a positive and negative here. And that's going to be the case whenever we do this. Positive and negative of all of the list of factors. All right. From there, you need to make a fraction. And you're going to take all the factors of your constant. They will be your numerator. And then your denominator are going to be all the factors of your leading coefficient. So here's my list of factors. I'll put 1 over 1. So numerator, denominator, which is just 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 6 over 1. And then if I had the negative version, I'll just keep that in mind by putting that plus or minus in front of the parentheses. So these are my possible solutions as it turns out. So when we make this list, we're making possible solutions. The reason why they call it the rational root theorem is because these are all rational numbers. That's one of the ways to classify them. And rational numbers that, if you look at them as a decimal, they're very nice numbers. But if you have a fraction in here, if you turn that fraction into a decimal, it would be a very nice decimal is what I call them. So how do we know which of these work? Well, what we're supposed to do is pick these numbers and start doing synthetic division. So the long way is I would take one of these numbers, so I'm just going to start at the end, 6, one of my possible zeros, and I'm going to take these numbers, make sure I have my full countdown, so 3, 2, 1, 0, and put those numbers in here. And I go through synthetic division. So I go down here, I drop the 1, 6 times 1 is 6, add these up, get 4, now I multiply again, 4 times 6 is 24, I add these up, I get 19, uh, then I multiply again, 19 times 6, which is 114, and when I'm done, I get 120, and I'm supposed to get 0, all right? So I'm going to pause there, and we're going to uh, find a faster way to do this. So this is the long way of doing this. This is not very smart to do. They had to do this when they didn't have graphing calculators, but we have graphing calculators now, so we're going to let the graphing calculator help us. So if 6 didn't work, then I might try negative 6, and if that didn't work, 3, and then negative 3, and I keep going until I get 0 at the end. So what I want to do is come up to the top and look at these steps, and we're going to do a little change on here. So first we're going to determine if the polynomial is factorable or not. We did that, that's the part I erased, it wasn't factorable. If it isn't factorable, we're going to use the rational root theorem to determine all the possible rational roots. So another one are zeros, you could use that word. X-intercepts, you could use that word. That could possibly be a zero of the function. So a zero of the function just means at the end I should get zero. And so we will still have to make our list, which is what we did down here. Here's our possible list. But instead of using synthetic division, what we're going to do is go to the y equals button in our calculator, and we're going to type in this equation. So uh, I have an older equation there. I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to type in x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. I don't really care about what this looks like at the moment, so just a quick reminder, since our leading term, our line leader, the highest exponent is a 3, remember this is going to have the end behavior uh, like this if you were in Miss Hantum's class. In my class, we would have just drawn something like this. And it's going to be going uphill. It's going to be not flipped because there's no negative there. So when we do graph this, we'll actually see what this looks like in a moment. But these are your end behaviors. All right? All right, now that you have that typed in, we're going to go to the table. So to go to the table, we need to hit second graph. And some of you might have some numbers typed in here. Some of you, it might be completely blank. Uh, if it's full, then you need to go back to the beginning of where I was talking about setting up your table setup, but you'll have to rewind for that. 
So anyway, I'm here and I'm going to start typing in my numbers and I'm looking for what's an x value that will give me 0 at the end when I'm done with synthetic division instead of 120. All right, so I'm just going to start with 1. Well, 1 gave me 0. I'm done. I actually don't need to check anymore. But if you want to see some of the other ones, negative 1, nope, that won't work. Uh, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 6, and negative 6. All my possible um, numbers to use on synthetic division. And the ones I want to use are the ones where the y value is 0. So just pick one of them. You can pick 1 or negative 2 or 3. So I'm just going to pick 1 and go from there. So what I'm going to do is take my synthetic division, put my 1 on the outside, put these numbers back in there, and go through synthetic division. So while you're setting that up, again, we decided it wasn't factorable. We used the rational root theorem, and then we got all our possible numbers to choose from, and then we went to our table and we entered all of them, and we're looking for where y equals zero. Those are the good ones. Those are the ones we like. And then, now we're on step three. We're gonna use synthetic division. I crossed all this stuff off, and you will know if it's a zero, if you end your synthetic division with zero, which is what I said here. So zero, remember, means no remainder. This will all tie together in a little bit. And then from there, we're gonna have something new that hopefully will be factorable. All right, so here we go. I should get zero here. That's what my calculator told me. So I'm gonna drop the one down, start multiplying, one times one is one, add these up. Now I multiply again, negative one times one is negative one, add those up. Sorry, when I added these up, I lost my negative. So now negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Add them up, and I get 0, which is what we want. So this is your remainder. When you have a remainder, you have found a factor. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This gets to be your constant. This is x. This is x squared. And so what we're going to do now is take this stuff. So I'm going to switch colors on you, and we're going to factor it. And hopefully this isn't factorable. It is a quadratic. That was chapter two. If it's not factorable, we'll still have our back, backup method of the quadratic formula. But let's make our x. So I need factors of negative 6, x squared, that make this 1x. And that would be a 3x with a negative 2x. And so I'm going to make my parentheses, my factors. And I start with x and x, and I double check. Is x times x enough to make x squared? It is, so I'm good. Then I'm going to make my face, my loops, to make these side numbers. So for instance, x times what can make 3x? That would be a positive 3. And then x times what can make negative 2x? That's a negative 2. So we're finding all the zeros. We have found one of them, 1. The other zeros are about to come from here. So once you're done, you take your factors, you set them equal to zero, and you solve. So in this one, I would add two. And in this one, I would subtract three. And what I want you to notice is going back to my table now is when I look at two, oh, what did I write wrong? Hold on one second. All right, sorry, made a mistake. I forgot to put the negative here. So that's going to switch this to negative 3x and pos positive 2x. So let me fix that here. So switching it here and here, which is now going to change my answers to negative 2 and positive 3. And so this is what I was trying to show you. Negative 2. I get y to be a 0. Th uh, 3, I get y to be a 0. Now, I'm going to graph this. I'm just going to go from here, go from zoom, 6. Uh, I want us to come over here and put this on our graph paper. 
because what's happening is as we solve, whether it was in 4.2 when they were factorable or 4.3 where we're using this rational root theorem, when we're solving, when we're finding what, you know, everything is equal to zero, we are taking all of those answers, the real answers, not the imaginary ones, and they're moving to the graph paper. So here is the, um, not graphed very well, but the negative 2. So if x is negative 2, y is 0. Uh, another one was the 3 that we just found. So if x is 3, y is 0. And then the one I used in my synthetic division. And so what I want you guys to Never see mind. now. I, I kept screwing with it. Oops. All right, well, that was Mrs. Pointer, if you don't know, and so uh, she apologized, and she says it's a good thing she wasn't swearing, so lucky all of us. All right, so um, let's tie this all together. So first of all, our shape, notice those end behaviors, falling on the left, rising on the right. For my class, it's kind of overall a bumpy line. If I could take these arrows and straighten it out, it would be a bumpy line. It didn't um, flip. Other things you should know is that three says you also have three answers. So the three answers, if they're all real answers, make it to the graph, one, two, three. The way the problem presented itself is standard form, and we can also now write it in factored form. So I'm gonna put an F for factors. And remember, we these were factors. This factor of X plus two, this factor of X minus three, and then those gave us our zeros. So I'm going to put Z for zeros. And the zero to this was negative 2. The zero to this was 3. And then we used an original zero from the synthetic division of 1. And now what I'm going to do is make the factor that would give me 1. And I can just make that as simple as possible, x minus 1. So if I take the time and multiply these three, so in my class, if all these neighbors meet, you will get back to this. So standard form, factored form. And so what we're doing here is we're finding where your graph hits the x-axis. We're getting it into factored form, even though it didn't start factorable. And we found all of our solutions, all our zeros, all our x-intercepts. All right, let's go to the next one. So on this one, I'm going to move some stuff out of the way. Uh, this time I'm not going to ask that you do the rational root theorem, because I'm going to go ahead and tell you one of the zeros. So if this is my problem, I could try to factor it. Just so you know, if I did this, there's not a GCF, but I did try to group these. I would take an x squared out of here and have x plus 1. And when I make my twinsies parentheses, uh, there's nothing I can GCF out of this to get x plus 1. So it's not factorable. But we don't have to do the rational root theorem because they are going to go ahead and tell us which number to use. 5 is a 0. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make my synthetic division box. I'll put a 5 over here. I have my countdown, 3, 2, 1, 0. So I'm going to put the coefficients in, 1, 1, negative 22, and the constant of negative 40. Because it's a 0, when I'm done, I should get 0 at the end. That's what this says. If you get 0 at the end, it's a 0. It's made it on the graph paper. And I'm going to start bringing down the 1, and now multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. Add these up. 6 times 5 is 30. Add these up. 8 times 5 is 40. Add those up, and I get 0. So it's a 0. This is a remainder. That means we are on our way to factoring. So if this is the remainder, this is the constant, this is x, this is x squared. And now I'm going to take this stuff. And while this wasn't factorable, I'm going to hope that this is factorable. And if it's not, then I'll use the quadratic formula. So factors of 8x squared that make 6x are 2x and 4x, so it's factorable. Here are my factors, or my parentheses, or for my class, my neighbor, the neighbors. And so x and x, when this first term meets this first term, is that enough for x squared? And it is, so I'm good. Now I'm going to make my loops, my face, to make these numbers. And since these are both x, it doesn't really matter which one I start with. So x times what makes 2x? That's a positive 2. And then x times what makes 4x? That's a positive 4. Now that it's factored, I'll set each factor equal to 0. So I get negative 4. I'll set this one equal to 0. 
subtract 2, and here we go. So what should I know about my graph? So first, it's an odd power, same as this one. It's not flipped, so it's going to have the same end behaviors as this one does, something that's going to look, you know, like this wavy line, or if you just draw the ends of it. I also know I'm going to have three answers. There's one and two. I'll remind you of where the third one is. And so here, and I'm going to ask that you do this in your homework as well, I'm going to have you write all the zeros and all the factors. So I'm going to just put an F for factors. So one zero is negative two. It came from the factor of X plus two. Another factor or zero is negative four. It came from the factor X plus four. And then our other zero is the one they gave us, five, that we used over here. And so what would be a very simple factor that got me there is x minus five. So standard form, and if I wrote this left to right, this is factored form. And I should have three answers, three zeros. I do one, two, three. And if I wanted to, I could go to the graphing calculator. I could type this in. So let me do that real quick. So it's graphing. And I want you to see here's that, that end behavior, you know, is falling on the left, rising on the right. You can't see the full thing very well. But there is my 5, there is my negative 2, and there is my negative 4. I could go to the table and then type them in. So 5, negative 4, whoops, that wasn't negative 4, negative 4, and negative 2, and see how I'm getting 0 for all of them. And these are just different ones that I don't need right now, okay? All right, next one. So here, unfortunately, they did not give us a little clue. So we're going to have to go back to this one and try this problem right here. 